Okay, so uh, thanks. It's good to be here at this virtual workshop. And uh, today I'm going to be presenting my work, Grad Slam, and it's titled Automatically Differentiable Slam. And uh, this is a joint work with uh, Ganesh Iyer from Carnegie Mellon University, Saroosh Suryasti from Concordia University, and myself and Liam Paul, we're from Mila and the University of Montreal. And uh, yeah, without further ado, I'll just get started. So we're tackling the problem of SLAM or simultaneous localization and mapping. And this is a key problem in robotics, especially if you want robots to operate in previously unseen environments. SLAM has been traditionally the way uh, this problem has been solved. In this particular paper, we're focusing on dense maps that are constructed from RGBD cameras. So the last decade or so has seen lots of improvements in deep learning. And with that, naturally, deep learning has been thought of as the next frontier in SLAM. But there's several interesting challenges that SLAM poses for deep learning. Uh, SLAM is a sequential process. So there's all of your IID assumptions that go with traditional ConNet training on static images that go out of the window. And uh, modern SLAM systems are very heavily engineered uh, for specific like robot sensor environment configuration. And also the fundamental question of what in the SLAM pipeline needs to be learned opens up a lot of design choices. So in this work, we take a new approach to SLAM from the perspective of differentiability. This is to say, if you look at a traditional SLAM system, it receives sensor data, and then the SLAM pipeline produces a trajectory and a map. So it's a state estimate that we denote by M here. SLAM is uh, thus a function that takes sensor inputs and gives you a state estimate of the environment. What if this mapping were differentiable? Like that would tell us that if you took the raw sensor measurement, which is like the images, and you perturbed it by some delta s, you know, like some perturbation here, that would tell you how much your map or trajectory estimate would change. And uh, we take inspiration from computational graphs that uh, most people that are doing deep learning know about. Uh, several processes in computer graphics and physics simulation are being made differentiable by replicating them as computational graphs. The higher library that you uh, saw earlier was also a good example of leveraging computational graphs for realizing differentiable gradients of approaches. So if you look at a traditional dense SLAM system, there is an RGBD image that is an input. And from this input image, we extract surface measurements. And these measurements are in the form of vertex normal maps. And the underlying geometry is then reconstructed in the local frame, which gives you a local map. And we assume we have like a global map, which is initialized to blank, uh, you know, voxels or points. But as, as time progresses, you have some persistent estimate of a global map which uh, you rate cast and then align with the local map to get and perform fusion to update the global map. And this process is repeated each frame. Uh, and several processes shown here in like red boxes, these are not differentiable. So uh, with the idea of making all of them differentiable, we propose Gratzlam. Gratzlam basically comprises several differentiable SLAM modules which you put together. So there's differentiable visual odometry modules and differentiable nonlinear least squares modules and dense mapping as well as ray differentials. Uh, for the purposes of this workshop in particular, uh, I'm going to focus on GradLM because that's of relevance to most of the audience that's joined here. GradLM is a differentiable Levenberg Markov optimizer. So, a lot of problems in robotics and computer vision, they're formulated as nonlinear least squares problems. And a typical nonlinear least squares problem involves minimizing a cost function C with respect to a few parameters X. And uh, the cost function is a sum of squared residuals, as you can see here. And 
each term is a nonlinear function of x. And due to this nonlinearity in practice, it's hard to find a global minimizer of this problem. Instead, what we do is we start with the initial guess of the solution and we gradually descend the loss landscape until we get to a local minimizer here. And uh, convergence does not necessarily mean in this case that we've obtained the global minimizer, which could be different. A common technique to solve nonlinearly squares problem is the Gauss Newton method, where we just pick an initial guess and we linearize the cost function about this guess. And we then solve the linear least squares problem. This gives us a new guess. We then re-linearize about this new guess and then iterate on the convergence or the fixed number of iterations is reached. Uh, the good thing about Gauss Newton method is it's differentiable, it's analytically differentiable, and you could keep unrolling the Gauss Newton optimization process as a computational graph and then backprop through the unrolled graph. The, the ugly side of Gauss Newton is that uh, it tends to get unstable when your Jacobian is near singular. So if J is your Jacobian, when J transpose J to the inverse is near singular, uh, then your estimate or optimization pro process is numerically unstable. Further, there's like no convergence guarantees. You could start off at some point, and then since there's no real check as to whether we're converging or diverging, depending on uh, how your Jacobian is conditioned, you might even overshoot the minima and then move on to a totally different part of the landscape. So there's uh, a widely adopted method called the levenberg marquardt method, or LM for short, which is much more stable and also provides a non-divergence guarantee. So in LM, to address the singular Jacobian instability issue that persists with Gauss-Newton, the trick is to simply employ a tiny lambda, uh, a positive constant that is added to each diagonal element of uh, J transpose J. But the question now is how tiny must this lambda be? And uh, LM proposes an elegant solution to this. And the solution is to use the look ahead, use like a look ahead operation to determine the value of lambda. So what we do is we basically take the gradient at this point and then look ahead to see if the solution actually diverges. If it does, like in this case, we then increase the value of damp uh, uh, the damping factor lambda. So we become more con conservative and take a much shorter step. And we keep repeating this step until we get a step size that is suitable or we determine that we've converged if even after trying for a while, we don't get a suitable step size. While uh, this look ahead operation is definitely attractive uh, because it lends a non-divergence guarantee to LM, the flip side is that it results in this discrete switching-like behavior because at every step you're looking ahead and then you're deciding whether to take a step or whether to retain the current guess and try another you know, look ahead factor. So uh, the key idea in GradLM is that this switching behavior is still predictable because you want to damp or increase lambda only if you're outside the trust region, that is if you're look ahead error is increasing. But if you're within a trust region, that is if you look at it, error isn't increasing, you want to undamp or decrease lambda. This is very similar to logistic functions that uh, we always encounter in classification like the sigmoid or the softmax. Uh, so we employ a generic version of the logistic function uh, as shown here to update the lab, uh, we reparameterize the damping coefficient update by using a smooth like logistic function. And uh, similarly, we reparameterize the state update or the parameter update using a very similar logistic function. So if you were to think about it intuitively, here's like a little mental picture. You'd have uh, step sizes lambda usually be discrete. This is like a increasing sequence of lambdas. And this results in gradients being non-zero, uh, like zero or non-existent almost everywhere. Over all of the constant parts, the gradients are zero. And at the points of inflection, the gradients are not defined. 
So uh, in our case, we have like smoother variants, uh, so we get smoother gradients. Uh, we use GradLM as a key building block to realize several differentiable SLAM systems. Uh, there's also other subsystems that come into play like differentiable raycasting and mapping that uh, I won't be able to cover in this talk. But uh, we're able to realize an exhaustive set of SLAM systems that work across a variety of uh, map representations like truncated sign distance functions or circles or point clouds. And uh, these differentiable SLAM systems run entirely on the GPU and their accuracy is very similar to non-differentiable counterparts. Uh, we've evaluated GradSlam on real sequences from uh, the TM RGBD benchmark shown here, which is significant amounts of sensor noise. We don't do any sort of noise filtering here just to keep uh, CPU memory usage manageable. And this is on a real sequence capture from an Intel RealSense camera. We now demonstrate a few applications of this framework. So uh, we've developed this framework where we're now able to backprop through the entire SLAM system, but we're now looking at what does this probability or differentiability give us. And for this, let's just consider an RGBD image, which is passed through the differentiable connect fusion pipeline to output a noisy reconstruction. And we compare this reconstruction with the true map and the gradients with respect to this error are back propagated all through to the original image. And now we take this new image and we cut out a hole in this image and we repeat the process. If you know the reconstruction is, uh, it has a hole here. So if you backprop again and compute gradients, and if you take the difference of these gradients, you actually see a peak here, which is caused by this hole. Uh, for a better illustration, you can see here where we have an occluder that's randomly spawned in front of the camera and we keep moving it, but GradSlam is able to backprop through the SLAM system and figure out uh, the exact pixels in the image that are resulting in a greater gradient magnitude. So it's able to associate 3D errors to 2D image pixels, like the errors in state estimates with their original sense of observations, which is key. Uh, we use that to now do a bunch of tasks like depth estimation or RGB image completion. So over here, we take a noisy initialization for an RGB D pair. Uh, it's, it's a pair a sequence of four images where the first image is initialized with noise and uh, the other three images are retained as ground truth. So we compute the two map using uh, GradSlam, like uh, we compute a noisy reconstruction using GradSlam. We also get the two map using like uh, GradSlam on a non-noisy frame. And uh, we compare the two maps for similarity and backdrop and we run few iterations of gradient descent and in about 400 iterations, as shown here, we're able to recover the depth and RGB uh, images. And on the right, you can also see a few cases for which we recover depths, even for pixels that are not measured by the depth sensor. So or here is an example where we denote per pixel sensitivity to the eventual reconstructed map. Uh, pixels that are not imaged in the depth map do not contribute a lot to the 3D reconstruction, but pixels along edges contribute more. There's also an interactive visualization that we developed where people can take a reconstruction, arbitrarily click on finds, and then look at what image uh, or what image pixels caused the greatest change in those points. So we've restructured GradSlam as a PyTorch library that can be used to run non-differentiable or differentiable variants of SLAM, and we hope to make it publicly available soon, uh, most probably by the end of this month. Uh, to follow more updates on this project, please visit montrealrobotics.ca slash grasslam. You can also watch our GitHub repo to uh, get notified when the post is out there. And uh, thanks for tuning in, and I'm happy to take any questions you might have.